Hello my friends, we are back in Affinity Photo and today we are taking a closer look to frequency separation. This is a tool that anybody should know how to use it. It's very, very helpful in many, many situations. And um, that's what we will do today. We have this image of this person that looks like it's all bruised up and we'll try to clean up the face and make it look nice. The first thing I like to do is duplicate my background layer. So with the background layer selected, I will go Command J. And now we have a duplicated background. You will find the frequency uh, separation filter under filters and it's right here. Click on it. And now you are presented with this uh, dialog where you have like a half, you can scroll it more right to right. Half of it, it's the texture and half of it is the color. And right now you don't really see much in the texture at all. So we need to raise the radius until we can see our texture. If you go too far and you start to see color, then you will get haloing and you will not get the nice result, but you want to move it far enough where you get enough texture. For this image, I think 6.4 works just fine. And the right side, you will see it's all blurry, but then the left side has some texture to it. And we'll click apply. Now our background copy turned into two different layers. One of them is named high fre frequency and the other one is low frequency. High frequency is where we have our texture and low frequency is where we have our color. So now our image is split into two different layers. If I turn off the high frequency, you will see this is just a blurry image. We have no texture to it. If I turn it back on, we are getting our texture on and it gets all clear. And if I turn off the low frequency and the background, I guess, then you will see this is the image with just the details. I'm gonna go Command Plus so we can see a little bit closer. You see, this is all the details in the image. I am going to turn on my layers again. And now we will work with the color on the low frequency. You have two options here. You can use um, the patch tool, which is found over here. And this is the patch tool. And to use that, Let's use the patch tool on the left eye, let's say. You will just drag a patch and then move your cursor where the skin looks good and click on it two times and it will take that. And then we'll take another patch. We'll do the same thing. And we'll keep going until we replace the whole bruise with nice clean skin. Now I am going very close to the eye Normally, you would not want to go close to the eye, but I will show you how we go around that. I have a little trick for you guys. I will show you at the end of this video. So I keep going with my patch tool and keep replacing the color with the color from below. And this works pretty well, but my favorite way of doing, doing it is just using the brush. And I will show you that on the other eye. Right now we got most of it. Let's say that's good for now. And then on this other eye, I will use the brush, which is right here on the left side, paint brush tool. And for this one, I'll make the brush a little bit bigger and I will take a sample color from underneath the bruise. And then I will just paint on the bruise, take samples, keep taking samples and painting it. And I like this method better. Seems to work better for me. Gotta make the brush smaller. And I am going really close to the eye. And I will show you my trick later to make it look natural. Because normally you do not wanna go really close to the eye because there should be a shadow there. Otherwise it just looks unnatural. Even babies have a shadows. Just, just the nature of the way the eye sits in the eye socket and your eyebrow will create a shadow over the eye. I'm going to use the brush to just kind of fix the color on this side as well. Make it a little bit not so red. Take your time, really pick the best color that is right next to the part that you're, pa you're patching. And let's see, I'm gonna fix it a little bit over here. Yeah, some little orange patches over here. Just gonna go through that. 
Maybe we can even fix this one. All right. So let's see. I am going to, you see, if we look closely, I'm going to go even closer. Now you can see the texture doesn't look so right in here because it was all bruised and scabbed. So now we have to work on the high frequency and fix the texture. To fix the texture, we will use the clone um, tool. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to clone from this side. Oops, hold on, something is happening. All right, this is happening and you know why? Because I have it set to current layer and below and we only want the current layer. So command Z to undo that and set it to current layer. And now we can take the texture and we can clone it to get the nice looking texture under the eye. I'm gonna make my brush smaller. And there you go. We finna fix the left eye as well. There you go. Now let's zoom back out. All right. Oops. So let's see if we group these two layers, the frequency separa separation, select them both and do command G. Now this is our before and after, before and after. Now, as you can see, we went way too far and it just does not look natural. You know what? Let's fix the lip a little bit to while we're here. We'll go back to the low frequency separation. Let's see, make the brush smaller and I will take the color from over here and fix this bloody lip just like that. And now we can go to our high frequency and use our clone if we want to take the texture from here and just kind of patch it up a little bit. And there you go. So this is our before and after for the lip, before and after. Command zero to fit the screen. This is our before and after. Now, how do we make it look natural? Well, we will use a mask. So I will make a mask. I want to make an inverted mask. So for that, I will hold down option where I click the mask. And now we have a black mask. That means it's hiding our frequency separation. And now I would like to use my paintbrush and I will use this gray scale to pick the color I want to paint with. And because we are on a black mask, when we paint with white, we will reveal the effect on uh, the portions of the face where we want to show it. So I'm going to zoom in again. And what I would like to do is start with white. That means I'm revealing it at 100%. I have hardness zero and I will start painting on the face. Oops, sorry. There you go. I'll start painting on the face with 100% just until I go something around that. And so that I do in here. And it's okay if you go too far, you can fix it easily. Then I am going to go with a little bit more gray, like almost a 50% gray. And that means now I'm only painting 50% of the effect around here. And maybe around on this other side. All right. Now, of course, I painted too much. So I'm going to go with a darker gray, which means it's going to reveal less of my effect. I just want to add those shadows black under the eyes. So I'm just going to paint once like that, maybe like this. You don't want to completely remove it because then it just looks unnatural. So this is how you use it on mask when you want to choose which effect you want to uh, show at what percentage. You just use your grayscale and if you use a white brush, then you show 100% if it's in the middle, like a 50% gray, it's 50% and so on. Maybe I even want to show a little bit more shadow over here. So I'm going more dark, maybe even a little bit more dark. There you go. It makes it look a little bit more natural. Something like that. And then I want to show the effect 100% on the lip. I want to fix the lip just like that. Go command zero to fit the screen. And now 
that's the before that's the after and it looks a lot more natural now that we have those um, you know shadows under the eye for a female I see a lot of people they completely remove the bags because you know females don't like to have bags there but then it just looks completely unnatural if you remove them a hundred percent so there you go this is how you use frequency separation and affinity photo I hope this was helpful thank you so much for watching my name is Kyla Ewing and I will see you in my next video